I thought I'd start a series on the different walks you can take as a destination using public transport. Today I'm heading to Circular Quay and catching the ferry across to Mossman and then walking around the lower north shore of Sydney. I decided to catch the light rail from Central Station in Chalmers Street to Circular Quay. The light rail goes towards Circular Quay every couple of minutes. Quickly enough for me to hop on and off a few stops. First stop up the line is Chinatown. This is the best place to interchange between the tram lines, as Capital Theatre tram stop is just around the corner. This is the one point where Sydney light rail trains cross over. The side of the trams have been turned into an assorted seating where traffic once flowed. The next stop is QVB. Finally here at Circular Key. I'll be catching the F6 ferry to Mossman Bay for more 4. And across Sydney Harbour we go. What appears to be a pile of rocks in the centre of Sydney Harbour is Fort Denison. Fort Denison was built on a rocky outcrop which was originally mined for sandstone and became a site of a hanging and later a military fortress, which was completed in 1857. The Mossman Bay Ferry service sees a half hour service during the weekday and an hourly service on the weekends. First stop on the Mossman Ferry is Cremorne Point. Then South Mossman
old Cremorne. and Mossman Bay. We will be walking past Old Cremorne and Cremorne Point wharves later on. Mossman Wharf has a coffee shop on site and plenty of seating to watch the boats bob and tides come and go. Mossman Wharf is a wheelchair accessible wharf and the walk around Mossman Rowing Club is wheelchair accessible as well. However, beyond the rowing club, we get to some stairs. Mossman Bay was the site of a sandstone mining operation in the 1870s and used an incline railway to haul the sandstone down the bay where it was carted off. The weight of the sandstone on one track would be heavy enough to raise the empty carriages on the other side. This area of water is known as Sirius Cove. The HMS Sirius was captained by Governor Arthur Phillip of the First Fleet. The ship received some upgrades which were apparently taken out in Mossman Bay in 1789. It was later to sink near Norfolk Island in 1790. The suburb of Mossman was named after Archibald and George Mossman who were granted four acres along this bay. They were originally whalers. George kept on whaling, but Archibald turned his attention to grazing. Who would think that this little cove was so close to the hustle and bustle of the Sydney CBD? Some of these stairs appear not to have received much love for many years. A skywriter is damaging a beautiful cloudless that day. Now we get to Cremorne Reserve, on which Old Cremorne and Cremorne Point wharves lie. Cremorne was named after a popular Cremorne Gardens in London. There are many beautiful flowers along the way, occasionally wafting a perfume into my nostrils as I walk. Around this rock we have Old Cremorne Wharf. This wharf was opened in 1905. Prior to 1905, the wharf was near the Sydney Amateur Sailing Club. It was the original wharf for Cremorne before the Cremorne Point Wharf was built in 1911, where it could meet trams. Down here is the Sydney Amateur Sailing Club. In 1853, the Cremorne Peninsula was purchased by James Milson, Jr., who inherited Milson's Point area from his father. He had purchased the Cremorne Point to build housing lots. However, the courts prevented him from selling lots right to the water's edge, enabling the walks that we are taking today. The garden in this area is known as the Lex and Ruby Graham Park, who tended to the gardens in this area from 1959 and was awarded with this park in 1987 for all their hard work that they had done. The Cremorne Point was the site of an amusement park in 1856, which included a large dancing hall, a carousel, and archery. The fun ended in 1862, after the gardens had a reputation of being unsavoury. This is a brush turkey, which is native to Australia. They were thought to have disappeared from the lower North Shore area from 1900, but because of the abundance of food and are not scared of humans, they have returned. 
If going to Cremorne North, make sure that you follow the path to the end of the point for a particular view of the harbour. You can walk down to this little lighthouse below, but not for me. There's Fort Denison once again. If it wasn't for these trees, there would be a great view of the Sydney Harbour Bridge. The McCallum Seawater Pool was built in the 1920s. It fell into disrepair and was refurbished in 1985. It is open to anyone who wants to take a dip, but does close for one day a week for cleaning. Almost at the end of the Cremorne Point Reserve Walk. This cove is known as Shell Cove it forms a stark contrast to what could have happened had the court stopped Milson from allotting houses to the end of the water at on Cremorne Point. The right hand side of Shell Cove sees the homes go right to the water's edge. I continue walking the streets of Carabba Point finding some old homes and some interesting history to go with them. Corrupted Point Ferry Wharf is definitely not wheelchair friendly. Time to start heading off home. I am catching the F5 Neutral Bay Ferry back to Circular Key Wharf. Like the F6 Mossman Bay Ferry, the F5 Neutral Bay Ferry runs every half hour during weekdays and every hour on weekends. This service stops at Curabilly. Close to the Prime Minister's pad, which is on this point. Now I'm catching the train back to Picton. If you like this video and would like to see more of this type of video, please let me know in the comments. And please like and subscribe to the Travelling Trent channel.